Welcome to The Weaver Sews. I'm Daryl Lancaster. When I learned to sew in the mid-1960s, invisible zippers were just becoming a thing. Instead of the traditional zipper installed with a placket surrounding the teeth, an invisible zipper had the coils rotated to the back so there are no visible coils in the seam. Installing this type of zipper is really simple. No pre-basting the seam closed, no pinning or basting the zipper in place, no guides for accurate stitching of the placket. As a matter of fact, no stitching is visible when the zipper is installed. It really is invisible, except for this tiny little teardrop zipper pull. There are a few things to be aware of when you work with an invisible zipper. And the most important thing is that you'll need a special zipper foot for installing it. The idea here is that the coils have to be uncoiled so the sewing machine needle can get close to them. Most machines have a special foot designed for this task. It looks like this, a center bar, with two half circles on either side. The small tunnels uncurl the coil of the teeth so the needle can get into the groove behind the coil. I own Janome sewing machines and I have both a high shank and a low shank machine. If you have a regular domestic sewing machine with a standard short shank foot, the Janome short shank version should probably fit if your brand doesn't have an invisible zipper foot. Bernina also has an invisible zipper foot. It is possible to install an invisible zipper with a regular zipper foot if it is one like the old-fashioned ski foot. The trick here is to position the foot so that the edge of the foot is flush with the sewing machine needle. The little screw on the plate in the back allows this fine tuning. If you can only position your needle so it sits within the little notch of the foot and not along the sidewall, the foot won't work for installing invisible zippers. Pressing the coils open on an invisible zipper really helps. You'll see here that the coils are tightly rolled around to the back. Pressing them opens them up and exposes the groove alongside the coil where you'll be stitching. These zippers are made of nylon, so you'll need to be careful with your iron settings. Another important thing to remember is to leave the seam open where the zipper will be installed. Install the zipper and then finish sewing the rest of the seam of the garment. No pinning necessary. There is an exception to that rule, but I'll explain that later. The hardest part of installing the invisible zipper is getting the placement right. This is probably one of the toughest spatial placements to conceptualize in all of sewing. Start with the two halves of the garment side by side, face up, so you are looking at the right side of the fabric. If you follow my suggestion and put the tailor's tacks on the right side of the garment, that will tell you that you are looking at the correct face. Place the open zipper with the coils pressed so they uncurl face down on to the right half of the garment. Really, this works. Place the top of the zipper tape about 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter down from the top of the garment. Presumably, there is a 5 eighths inch seam allowance across the neck where the facing will attach. And you want some comfortable room for the top of the zipper pull as it can be bulky. 
The ditch or groove alongside the coils should be placed exactly on the 5 8 inch or 1.5 centimeter seam line. You can put a pin near the top of the tape just to get the whole thing started. Position the zipper foot so the coils ride in the right tunnel and start sewing, keeping the groove or ditch right along the seam line. A small piece of black electrical tape can guide the cut edge of the garment. You'll start stitching and then stitch down the zipper until the foot reaches the zipper pull at the bottom of the zipper. There will be no more coil to stitch, so backstitch and remove the garment section from the machine. Now comes the challenge. Pretend as if you're actually going to sew the center back seam and place the garment sections right sides together. Place a couple of pins to keep the seam allowances together below the zipper to help learn how to orient this part of the zipper placement. Carefully fold back the half of the garment with the zipper attached. And you will notice that the zipper is face down in the correct position. Now you can align the other half of the zipper tape. As before, start at the top of the tape 3 8 of an inch or 1 centimeter below the upper edge of the garment and place the ditch or the groove alongside the coil right on the seam line. Well, Mulder, I love you, but that's not going to work. <laughs> if you're using the traditional ski foot, reposition the zipper foot to the other side. Or just position the coil in the opposite tunnel if you're using a regular invisible foot. As before, start sewing at the top of the tape, stitching alongside the coil in the groove or ditch, stopping when the foot reaches the zipper pull at the bottom of the zipper. Remember to back stitch at the top and bottom of the row of stitching. And that's it. The zipper is in the garment, but of course you aren't finished yet. Before we move on to stitching the rest of the seam, I want to take a minute to mention how to install an invisible zipper when you're trying to match plaids or horizontal weft patterning. The first half of the zipper is installed as we previously described. Close the zipper. And with a pencil or tailor's chalk, mark the design lines that need to match on the other side onto the zipper tape that isn't attached yet to the garment. Follow the previously described steps to position the zipper correctly on the second side, but place a couple of pins to line up the zipper with the design lines based on the position of the chalk lines. It would be helpful when you stitch the second side of the zipper on to machine based first, just to double check that everything lines up when it's closed. To finish, first we'll close up the zipper and give it a light press. To finish stitching the remainder of the seam below the zipper,
you'll need to switch to a regular zipper foot if you're using the special foot for attaching invisible zippers. Carefully pin the remainder of the seam. Place the edge of the zipper foot alongside where the stitching ended when you installed the zipper. It won't be possible to pick up where you left off. Begin stitching alongside where you ended the zipper installation and stitch to close the remainder of the seam. Take care that you will most likely be sewing against the grain, which in the case of the swing dress is pretty steep. Make sure that you've adequately stay stitched seam allowances with the grain, so there will be no distortion by stitching the seam against the grain. Press the seam open and give the zipper a good press. Remember the zipper coils are nylon and take care with the heat of the iron. There is one more remaining step to complete and this one is pretty important. Don't skip this step. The bottom of the zipper tape is sort of flapping in the breeze. It's important to secure the tape to the seam allowance so a hole doesn't form in the base of the zipper seam. Open out the seam allowances and stitch the lower part of the zipper tape to each corresponding seam allowance. Stitch for approximately one inch or two and a half centimeters. Repeat for the other side. And there you have it, a perfectly installed invisible zipper. Invisible zippers are not just for the back neck. Here, I added one to the center back of this skirt, which was drafted from the lower portion of the swing dress. And here, I added one to the side seam of this cute summer top. The zipper starts at the lower edge of the garment and unzips up toward the armhole, ending just below. All that's left on this dress is the hem and the facing. We covered the hem in a previous video, but next time we will tackle the facing. I'm Daryl Lancaster for The Weaver Sews.